Jimmy. Good? All right. Are we live, Jimmy? All right. So we are live for another AGN Marketing Ninja Workshop. So let's go, guys. Let's go. All right. So today I got a, I got a very special speaker on stage. Somebody has been with me since day one in my marketing uh, career. He's also my family, my brother-in-law, and uh, one of my best friends in my life. And he's a marketing ninja. So um, uh, he's going to be taking the stage today to talk about Google and how is that so important for anybody that really wants to scale their business and succeed in today's environment. Before I bring him on stage today, I want to mention a couple of things that are happening and give you a little bit of uh, maybe a couple of minutes state of the union in the world of marketing in this particular era middle of the year 2022 uh, to good. tell you guys what's happening right now, okay? So first of all, for those of you guys that are joining the stream, for those of you guys that are here live, a lot of people don't know what AGM stands for. Anybody wants to tell me from the audience, what does AGM stand for? Aggressive What's that? Aggressive marketing. Aggressive marketing. We could good. potentially change our name yeah. to <laughs> aggressive <laughs> grabbing marketing. All right, anybody else has any guesses? There you go. We should have a present for her for uh, at least a bell. Ding, 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 right. ding, ding. That's right. Attention grabbing media is what she said. All right. That is the name of our <laughs> company. Um, way back when, as I was actually doing marketing for my father and for our brand Natural Slim, um, I was capturing attention and that word attention kept on sticking. And I said, that's going to be the name of our company. And we went back and forth with attention grabbing, attention getting, and um, attention media or whatever, and then we stuck with attention grabbing media. That's where we are today. Uh, my wife mentions to me all the time, I don't think people know that what that stands for. And it's not the same thing to say AGM than attention grabbing media. Because in the world of business, what you need to be able to make it is more attention. Simple as that. If you don't have attention, you cannot generate sales you cannot generate more revenue. If you have attention, then your products and services can be sold to people. It's, it's that powerful. And it, it made a lot of sense for me to just call the company Attention Grabbing Media because that's what we do every single day. So whenever you come to a workshop, just to make it very clear, you're going to learn how to get more attention. If we have a workshop in which you don't discover how to get a little bit more attention or a lot more, we're not doing our job. And we're doing this. Somebody the other day said a comment. We've been doing this now for a year now. There's been 30 different workshops, things that I can tell you no other agency out there does. Uh, ever since we opened, when I opened up this building, the big goal that I had is this, having people come, make it a place where they can come and learn business, marketing, implement those things that they were learning, get success, and from that, get more results, and we all do better with it. That was the idea behind it, and we have uh, been fortunate. We've had this incredible Carly running these events for a while now and, and making sure that you guys keep on showing up both on the stream and in, in person here. And they are something that it, it's, a, it's a passion of mine, which is helping as many of you guys as possible, as many of you guys that want the help because you can't really help somebody that doesn't want help. First thing is you gotta want to get helped. And once you want that help, then that's, that's what this is for. So we have 30 workshops that are available for you guys to watch at any time if you're lacking attention. Because every single one of these workshops, again, it's 30 of them over the last year. I think it's 26 by now, I think. I think we're, we, we are at the 26 mark at this point. Uh, but every single one of these workshops are going to help you capture a little bit more attention. We've been talking about, we, we covered so many different subjects. Uh, myself, um, the coach himself, a lot of other great speakers that we've had and guests, TikTok advertising, Facebook advertising, email nurture, branding, uh, public relations, and Google advertising, and so many different uh, varying subjects right now that every single one of those, if you master it, will help, help you capture attention. So make sure you watch those, ask for help, get the help that you need so you can keep on capturing more of that attention that you all need to do better in the game of business. Okay, so that being said, my other announcement to you guys in the stream and to you guys here in person is that AGM is actually taking in more clients. So if any of you guys need help, I can tell you that our marketing organization is not just one marketing organization. 
We have a lot of individual teams that have been formed over the years that are really good at what they do. So it's like there's a lot of businesses out there, a lot of marketing agencies that specialize in one thing. They're either Amazon or they're community management social media or they're e-commerce experts or they help you generate leads or they help you create content or they help you write email campaigns and uh, sequences of content. Those are a lot of different individual agencies. We pretty much have all those agencies here and we do it all here. It's over a hundred of us that are doing this for businesses all day long and we're really, really, really good at it. Somebody asked the other day, um, somebody emailed our, our email line and they said, Manuel, thank you for your workshops. How amazing that you guys can do this. My daughter was saying, uh, I don't want to take up Jorge's time, otherwise I would share you guys uh, what, what, uh, what he said. But he said, um, um, she, my daughter cannot understand how you guys are doing this for free. How is it possible <laughs> that you're giving so much value for free? And my response to my daughter was, well, because they have a lot of other clients, some other bigger clients that help them sustain their business. And that is 100% correct. So we are helping anybody from startups that they want to create social media channels to people that are great businesses looking to get their brand and their message to the next level. So wherever you might be on that journey, we potentially have help for you. So if any of you guys want to talk to one of our consultants to find out how we can help, you can always uh, have this link on your notes, talk to a ninja.com. It's literally the, the website that you have to type in. You select the date, a time, and you'll be able to talk to one of our guys to find out how we can help you with whatever it is that you need. The first step is to find out, just like when you're sick, you go to the doctor to find out what's going on, and then they give you a medication or a prescription or something to resolve it. Same thing, is, uh, same thing for, for us here. We need to find out what is going on with you and your business, and then based on that, we give you direction as to what would be the next step for us to be able to help you. So whatever the case may be, we have help. And yes, we will take your money for that because obviously we're running a business, so we are going to exchange our valuable services for money so we can help you incorporate some of the successful strategies. All right, so talk to a ninja.com is, uh, is the website if you guys want to book an appointment to talk over a Zoom call with one of my guys or to visit us here physically in the city of Largo in our headquarters, whatever that may be, we will make it happen for you. Okay, so now, coach, two more, two more minutes. Yes. Yes? Two more minutes in my world, how many, how many minutes are they? You guys are laughing, right? 20? It's about, <laughs> Rob says five. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> so I want to give you extra value. I know you guys came here to learn about Google. You will learn about Google. Uh, something that I wanted to share, like five bullet points of things to pay attention in, in this environment right now. Because things have changed quite a bit. And I, and I got a series of questions the other day, and I thought that I would just answer them here. Number one is organic content. First of all, what is organic content? Organic content is these incredible platforms that allow us to press a few buttons and reach the world in exchange for a cell phone connection that you have to be able to sustain? Yeah? yeah sure. All right, audio's good? Yeah, everything's good. I okay. Well, Jimmy, the creative director, is just swinging by and saying hi here. Hello, Jimmy. Everybody <laughs> say hi to Jimmy. Uh, so the organic content is, is basically something that got invented with social media platforms in which you were able to create a profile, which is either a Facebook profile or a YouTube channel or an Instagram uh, a profile, a TikTok account, all those places that allow you to, with a couple of tricks, reach more people that don't know who you are. And those tricks have changed over the years, dramatically. A lot of people saying organic content is dead. Well, my response to that is organic content is dead in some places is very, very, very much alive in many other places. So the one thing to keep in mind when you're doing organic content is, where is that? That's not mine, right? Oh, that's this okay. one. Okay, all right. We're good. A lot of interruptions today, guys, <laughs> right? When we're talking about organic content, we're talking about the ability to create your message about your business, about your product, about your services, about who you are, how you're helping people with your information and putting, putting that message in front of as many people as possible. That's organic content. You're not paying anything. The other side of content is paid advertising. 
which is also called media buying, in which now you have to take a money out of your pockets and give it to these platforms to get attention that otherwise you would not get. Do you agree that if you can have organic reach, it's better than having to take money out of your pocket for advertising? Raise your hand if you agree that it's better to reach people organically. Okay, good. So we, that means that any strategy that we can put into, into action revolving around organic attention is extremely important. And in the last two years, the game has drastically changed, but it's still incredibly powerful. Actually, right now, is probably one of the greatest opportunities that we've had in a decade. There is this thing called TikTok. Raise your hand if you heard about TikTok. Okay. TikTok has changed the game. TikTok has changed Facebook's game and Instagram's re, uh, uh, game and YouTube's game. They actually changed the entire landscape. Disruption. Across the board, disruption everywhere. Everybody had to, every, every, every platform, you're talking about platforms that are worth many, many billions of dollars. They try to invent similar things to what TikTok were doing because TikTok was taking too much attention. So over the last couple of years, the first one to actually copy uh, TikTok was Instagram. And they rolled out something called Instagram Reels. First of all, they rolled out, it's, it, the, the story goes back a little bit longer because first of all, they started copying Snapchat and they started copying something called Stories and they rolled that out on Instagram. But TikTok's format of long vertical content, short vertical content that covers the entire screen, started losing a lot of attention. All the young demographics, and later on, the, the older demographics started leaving Instagram and going to TikTok, and it's still happening today. They are the fastest growing social media platform of all time. They have over a billion active users right now. To give you guys perspective, Twitter has been around for 15 years, right? Twitter has 300 million users. So TikTok broke a billion users in a few years. It tells you how big of a uh, an, a, the disruption this company has, has done across the world. So they disrupted that. So Instagram Reels and Facebook Reels are inspired and motivated by TikTok's complete disruption of the landscape. When they did that, Instagram and TikTok started going back to um, Instagram and Facebook. They started going into a battle again with TikTok to try to take some of that attention away. So Instagram Reels and Facebook Reels and, and TikTok content, vertical content, and now something else that happened, we're going to be talking about the Google, right? Well, YouTube, which is owned by Google, started pushing now something called the YouTube Shorts which is their own version of Instagram Reels, the exact same thing, and it has taken off. So the organic content that allows you to grow social media channels right now is stronger than ever in these platforms. We just broke 400,000 followers on a brand new, ins uh, brand new TikTok profile. We created it 117 days ago, to be exact. And today we broke 400,000 followers. If you guys want to check it out, thank you very much. You search for us.naturalslam. It is our TikTok profile. And we have many of them. We have done dozens by now, if not hundreds. And the same formula has repeated uh, across the board. 400,000 followers in 115 days. So how do we accomplish that? It's 100% organic, not a single dollar spent on growing the channel. We started testing some ads, as Jorge talked about a couple of weeks ago, but it was not to grow the audience, it was literally to generate leads. as a different subject <coughs> for organic distribution. There's nothing like it right now. And Instagram channels are on fire right now. YouTube Shorts are helping YouTube channels take off right now. YouTube, is, YouTube Shorts, if you guys know about YouTube a little bit, you might know that creating content on your YouTube channel it's not going to catch fire overnight. It takes time, repetition, consistency. You got to do it over and over again. Put your head down, close your eyes, and do it. And one day, if you're good at it and you're consistent and you didn't give up, it will take off. Well, YouTube Shorts are a different story. YouTube Shorts are the only way that you can actually create one video without having any subscribers and that thing to go viral. <laughs> it's the only thing. There's nothing else that you can do on YouTube that's going to help you go viral and help you capture a lot of attention. And if you guys check out how cool that is, if you open up the YouTube short, uh, uh, app, there's a section now here called Shorts. 
And if you click on that thing on the shorts, these are videos that people are making for the platform. And it's very easy for people to subscribe because it has a button at the bottom, which is a big red button which says subscribe, right? So uh, you want to make sure that you are creating for that particular platform right there. That is the greatest opportunity for you guys to get attention and grow without having to take your money out of your pocket and give it to these platforms, which they don't need your money to make it. They're doing quite well without your money. So you want to try to protect that. That's the difference between a brand, for example, like Natural Slim, which spends, for every dollar that we spend on advertising, we get $10 back, we get $12 back, or a brand that doesn't have organic content that they have to spend $1, and they hopefully get $2 back, and they hopefully try to make that money back on repetition of messages, emails, text messages, etc. What we have going on that makes us special is that we have organic content distribution at scale. So it makes it a lot more effective for us to profit in our business. So make sure, make sure that you guys are using organic content, but don't just use organic content. Look for the opportunities that are present today in the social media environment. If you use those opportunities and if you do them with persistence and you don't expect a miracle overnight, you will eventually succeed. So very quickly, rapid fire, the key to a thriving business continues to be the ability to list build and nurture via SMS and email marketing. I want you guys to make sure that you are doing everything that you can to build lists for yourselves because social media will not make you profitable on its own. You gotta make sure that you consistently bring people into your world via email and text messaging campaigns. That basically is the key to a thriving business in today's environment. Social media is the entry point into a connection with an audience. That is all it is. You want to introduce yourself to the world. You want to let them know that you exist. And after you do that, you're going to try to bring them into your world and get their emails and get their phone numbers. That way, whether Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or whoever likes you or not, it's besides the point because you're going to have a person to sell your products and services to and to nurture. Email marketing is still very much necessary today. Brands today are still experiencing, when they do a good job, 20% or, or more open rate. Mr. Jesus over here who handles our email marketing department is getting 27%, 30% open rates right now, which is a really good open rate in your email campaigns. So it's very important to focus on your email. Text messaging is even more important right now. Why? Because when you do text messaging campaigns, you're getting open rates at 95% or more, which means 100 emails are gonna get you 20 to 25 to 27 opens. 100 text messages are going to get you 95 plus opens, which is an outrageous difference between them two. So these two have to be used in combination in an omnipresent fashion. When you send a great email, let people know that you send them that email. When you send a, a, an email, make sure that you're connecting them with your text line. Somehow message people consistently and make sure that they know that you're still in business ready to help them with your products and services. Okay, and last but not least, this is a, there's a le reason why this is the last bullet point. Google advertising, this might be shocking what I'm about to say. You guys ready to get shocked? Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you, Rob. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Google advertising is senior in importance by a long shot over any other ad platform. I'm gonna say that again. Google advertising is senior in importance right now over any other ad platform at this point by a long shot. So if you don't have a Google Ads game, make sure you put that into, into play. Because the Google Ads, first of all, Google has been around for way longer than Facebook, way longer. Google is actually more interested in finding you a qualified audience than Facebook is. Facebook is very broad and very open. And what their data is, it's very, very flimsy, we could say. Very, very light. If you, saw, if you one day like to post about a dog being caressed by its owner, you're a dog lover and you're gonna buy dog treats. That's what Facebook thinks. It's as simple as that. They use data of your own individual profile. Google has a lot more valuable data than what Facebook does. They understand your search history, they understand a lot more things that Facebook does or Instagram does. So Google is very important, I'm actually pushing more and more energy right now on spending on Google 
for Natural Slam than I am on spending on Facebook and Instagram, and it's working out. So it's the right thing to do. So whether you're doing pre-roll advertising on YouTube, or if you're doing search campaigns on, on Google, whatever that may be, Google has to be a big part of your game right now. And the reason why I was originally the Facebook ninja and so focused on Facebook for many years, which if you guys have paid attention, I don't call myself that anymore. I am the marketing ninja, not the Facebook ninja anymore. Even the name of my podcast will change. Then in my podcast, which has a lot of attention and I get a lot of people listening to that podcast, it used to be called the Facebook marketing ninja. It's now called the marketing ninja. That's it. The reason why I was so into Facebook is because I really, really enjoy writing opportunities, which I also like to describe as writing existing waves. That Facebook opportunity right now is not the same that it was four or five years ago. It's not the same. The game has balanced out. Google advertising on, and Facebook are pretty evenly priced at this point. If I had 10 people for $1 on Facebook, but I had one person for $1 on Google, I would always go on Facebook because of size. I wanted to get more people. That's the way it's been for years. No longer the case. Right now, 10 people on Facebook are going to cost you the same than 10 people on Google. So it's about the same. The game has evened out over the last year or so. So that's why I'm putting a lot more attention to the ad platform of Google because it's a lot more seasoned with data that's going to help you get better qualified leads. That leads me to tonight's workshop in which our CMO is going to be talking about Google advertising and how we're leveraging it to help you generate more leads, generate more revenue, and scale your business. So without further ado, Mr. Coach Jorge. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you. Yes, that was a perfect segue because today is all about um, getting leads from Google and uh, we're gonna be talking about organic, like uh, Manuel was talking about, so you know, not paid, but also paid ads as well when it comes to Google. So this is the AGM workshop, secrets to getting more leads. First of all, you are out of business if you don't have a prospect or if you don't have leads, right? Um, if you don't have anybody to talk to, anybody to sell, obviously your business is gonna die out. That's Mr. Zig Ziglar right there. We're still live, right? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Um, some of the free resources when it comes to Google that we're going to be talking about is Google search results via SEO, uh, Google search results via the Google My Business, they are also called Google Maps, now they're called Google Business Profile, they keep changing their name. But this is essentially the maps, so when you show up there and people you know, can uh, find you on there so they can become a lead. And then we're going to talk about YouTube videos. So the first one is Google search. So here you can see if I type in Amazon ranking services, who's number one after all the ads? Because right now we're talking about organic results. AGM agency, Amazon ranking services. So you can potentially take advantage of all of this free traffic. People typing into Google, and if you're ranking at the top on the first page, let's say, which there's 10 results on that first page, then you could be taking advantage of all of this free traffic. Everybody up here has to be paying for that click. Something like this kind of keyword, it could be costing you $10 or more each click, not even like a lead, it's just per click, right? So we get tons of traffic because we're the number one here uh, from all of this free traffic. So <clears throat> that's due to um, us optimizing our website. So that's called SEO, Search Engine Optimization. So you're you know, doing things to your website so that you can make sure to be um, towards the top or right on the first page. A couple of tips I can tell you guys is you just got to make sure that your content is, first of all, relevant and good quality. Like people are getting, you know, um, they're, they're getting something out of it. Um, for that, you, you can... You can pretty much make a, an article that's about uh, five to a thousand words long. It kind of depends on what your, you know, your industry is. So something like this, where there's a lot of information out there, we've got to be more competitive, so it's got to have more, you know, more content on there for us to have a chance to rank and beat out the competition. But also, you've got to make sure that you do a little bit of keyword research and you figure out, like, well, what are people actually typing in? Nowadays, people type in a lot of uh, questions, especially because we're using the voice, um, you know, to search. 
So you just kind of type in like how you how you talk, and you're like, well, you know, maybe you type in best uh, Amazon ranking service company near me or something like that, right? So you got to take all of that into account by doing your your keyword research, competition research, so that you can show up there. And then lastly, uh, number three, which is conversions. I wanted to add that in there because you can get all the clicks and all the traffic that you want, but if you're not paying attention to what happens once the you know, the traffic or that website visitor lands on your, on your page, then you're just kind of wasting that traffic, right? So you have to pay attention to um, that website visitor and what are they clicking and things like that. So um, you just got to make sure that you're using the right kind of links inside your, your article and stuff like that so you could track it and see what's, um, what's working and what's not working. Secondly, or this is all still, we're talking about organic free traffic here, Google My Business. If I go to Google right now and I type in social media marketing, Largo, Florida, so we're talking right now about the local, anything that comes, when it comes to local and adding a city or any kind of what they call geo, the maps are going to show up. So if you're looking for some sort of a local service, most of the time, even if you don't add a, um, a, a city to it, like let's say you're going to look for plumbers or something that Google knows it's a local thing, the maps will still show up. But for the most part, um, you do want, you know, when people add in the, uh, the city and the state and, and stuff like that, the maps will show up. And guess who's coming up number one for this kind of keyword right here? So this is us again. And you can see right here, let's see if this works, yeah. So this is the desktop version right here. And you can see we get a ton of clicks on uh, the website right here. On a, on a desktop, what it shows is the, uh, the link back to our website. So we, a lot of people that you know, are, are searching for this kind of stuff, they come to our website and they come check out our services, fill out our form, talk to one of our marketing consultants and stuff like that, right? On a mobile, like this over here, it's actually better because um, if I type in marketing agencies, we also come up number one here in the Largo area. And it's actually better because it has a little button right there that they can just call. So that cuts the time out, right? They don't have to fill out a form, first of all. It's a lot more convenient for the customer. And um, you know, what if it happens and, and maybe our guys are busy and it just goes straight, you know, the call comes in and it goes straight to, the, to our sales reps and um, just, it's a lot more efficient, so we can obviously close a lot better that way. Um, okay, so you get website leads, you get phone calls, and then lastly, what's really cool about this is you have social proof. So this is where the reviews come in. Okay, so the reviews that you're getting, so like you can see here, for example, we have 62 reviews, these guys have 44, these guys have 17. So reviews do matter a lot. You want to make sure that you're always asking for reviews for for all your customers. We can get into that here in a second. Um, but another thing, it serves for not just for ranking purposes, for social proof. People want to know that you know, they're not like the first one to come to you. Other people have had success working with you and, and stuff like that. So review is obviously super important. All right. So also, um, Google My Business, there's three things that I wanted to highlight on here, and there's something that is very little known for some reason still. A lot of people don't use all of the services that Google My Business or the Maps uh, service offers you. The first one here is this thing called Company Post. So like I said, a lot of people don't know you. There, there's like a social media feed inside the, the uh, Google Maps. Um, and so you can post here and you can promote anything you want. Like this is our last, um, you know, our last workshop that we had. Here's Manuel. We're promoting, uh, I think this, this is going back to our blog, our website. We promote our YouTube channel. You can promote pretty much anything, right? So you can get a bunch of leads, maybe not just to your website, but maybe leads that go to your social media accounts and you get a lot of followers out of it, right? And Google loves when you're using all of their properties because they're, they're putting them out there for, for a reason, right? So if you're, not, if you're using it and your competitors are not using it, you have that you know, advantage over them just by posting a simple image, a little bit of text, and then it links back to wherever you want. And not only that, like here's the link, it, it's, it's uh, learn more. I don't know if it's gonna give us an example here, but you can also uh, put a phone number. So you can put anything you wanna promote. Maybe you have a special going on, holiday special, whatever it is, right? And then you can um, 
put a, a button here that people can call your office right away and you can generate leads that way. Okay, so the, the reviews, I, I wanted to highlight that obviously you wanna be using your link to the reviews everywhere that you can. So you could put this on your email signatures. You could put it obviously on social media, Facebook, Instagram, things like that. Um, anytime, if you have a local like uh, tra a foot traffic kind of uh, company and you have people coming in, you can put that link back to your reviews on like a QR code and things like that. Um, but what's really important that a lot of people don't know is Again, not just for social proof and stuff like that, but the words that are in these reviews are actually go, uh, flowing back to Google, and it's learning from those keywords. It's considering them as keywords. So it's people indexing. Yes, they're, they're being indexed by the search engine. Exactly. So, so the search engine, Google, right, is learning what kind of services you're offering because maybe. You know, our website talks about Amazon ranking and stuff like that, but maybe a customer comes in here and they start talking about uh, email marketing or something, right? And I maybe had a, did, done a bad job about uh, optimizing my website on email marketing or doing articles on that and that kind of stuff. Well, it picks it up there and it knows that we're relevant to those sort of keywords. So now our website actually moves up on the Google search results as well as uh, on the maps. Okay, and I wanted to give you a ninja tip here on, uh, this is something that a lot of people don't know or don't do, which is called geotagging images, okay? Geo stands for like, you know, location. And it's very, very simple thing to do that all you gotta do is name your image before you upload it to your Google My Business. Just name it, whatever your company name is, plus the, the city. And you can vary that too. Like for example here, we, we, you know, we did Manuel Suarez, and then we'll do Largo, Florida, and then we'll upload that to our AGM, our agency, Google My Business, right? Maybe the next time we'll upload it, we'll say email marketing services, Largo, Florida. The next one could be about whatever, plus maybe we'll you know, kind of also switch it up and we'll go the next city over, Clearwater, Florida, so we can start to maybe rank over there as well. Make sense? Super Ninja, it's very, very easy. You just gotta go to your image you got to go right click and if you're on a Mac uh, it says get info and that's how you get to this section right here and if you're on a PC it says properties question Right. That's so the question is, good question. Just, yeah. just rename it, and uh, it's not going to show up. The name is not going to show up on the search. That's it's, right. That's right. It's, it's hidden inside the file. I have, I have been doing Amazon uh, brands for, since 2013. One, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, at this point, I would say it's, it's a, not a conspiracy theory, <laughs> but it's a speculation that adding the name of, adding keywords to the file before you upload the pictures are gonna help you get ranked. Because there's no, no, it's not supposed to be one of those places that you keyword uh, optimize for, right? But based on, uh, on our own research here, that's being used. Like if you search for Manuel Suarez Lago, Florida, you're probably gonna find us at the top. Uh, granted, I'm sure there's not many Manuel Suarez Lago, Florida running a marketing agency, but you want to put keywords on that file because it kind of, the, the, the system receives that file with those keywords and the word is again indexing. Right. That gets indexed, whatever is on your website is indexed, whatever is added on your reviews is indexed, whatever is added on your post is indexed. All, these All of this is being indexed by up. the algorithm. That's why it's the most, it's mo the most incredible search engine on the planet. Google yeah. is not a human thing. Google is a massive, artificial intelligence machine. The most incredible one on the planet. They use all of this. There's no single human being making it better. It's all an algorithm. And, and also, so if all you did was just that, eh, mine, it's not really gonna make a difference. You gotta do everything that you know we're talking about. I was gonna say, can you name it like AGM, Clearwater, Largo, Pinellas Park? Like yeah, oh, every, every single picture. So what she's asking is, 
Can you name it all the different cities around you, for example, so you can try to reach more areas? In a place like where we're at right now, there's many small cities. There's Largo, Safety Harbor, Clearwater, Palm Harbor, etc. So you could do that because anybody that's, that's in Palm Harbor, anybody that's in the Tampa Bay area, we could service here right. in AGM. So you can actually have a Google Doc or a spreadsheet in which you are naming all the different images and what keywords you use and just change the file names and just try to cover more. These are little tricks that are, they really do work. Yeah. They're not public. Google is never going to tell you that. Yeah, they're never going to reveal that kind of stuff. Amazon is never going to tell you that, stuff. <laughs> but they are, they are absolutely facts. And you can test this out. These are things that you can experience yourself. You can actually grab one of these files and name it. First of all, before you upload it, search for yourself on Google and find out. Give it about a week or two after you upload it, and now search again. And you, you should be able to see a difference there. Yeah. I have another question. Uh, uh, re repeat your question. Yeah. Pardon? Rephrase your question. Repeat it. Repeat it. Put a post on the image, you know, um, like that. Would that be tied into on your Google page where it's services, you know, for Clearwater, mm. uh, Reddington Shores, Pinellas County, you know, I, mm. I have about 20 different areas that I service. Right. No. No, because this is... This what was the question? Do you understand? Yeah, we'll, we'll repeat the question for everybody that's watching. So the question is, if we add these you know, keywords into the title of the image, once would you upload it to this section and designate it for the different service areas that you have on your Google My Business? The answer is no, because the thing is that that's going in either here, where, where the posts you know, section is of your Google My Business, so you don't choose an area for that, or... B, you would also, or, or the other section that you would upload it to is just, you know, you're on Google, you can upload images as an owner, and you also can upload whether it's inside the building, whether it's outside the building, like there's different little sections like that, but there's not a section that's tied to your service area. Yeah. So, but, it, but, it, but it will still help if you add in those service areas plus your keyword of what your industry is about. That's right. So just keep in mind that this should be religion for anybody. This part, acquiring Google reviews for any business, no matter who you are and what your industry is, Google is still the most important place on the internet world to have people write reviews about your brand. Uh, even for e-commerce brands, people are still searching on Google. It's a reality. Like they, yes, people are searching on TikTok yeah. for things now. They're searching on Facebook for things. They're searching on Amazon for things. Google is still, by a long shot, the biggest search engine on the planet, Definitely. by a long shot, which means that people are going to want to find out if you're for real searching on Google for you first. And one of the first things that shows up when you search for a brand, for a founder, CEO, whatever, is the reviews of the company. So if you are in trouble in that area, if you have one review or zero, you look like you really don't have enough Experience. Yeah, very, very similar, going back to what you're saying on, on Amazon, you have to fight and just do whatever you can to get the first five reviews, let's say. And then from there, I mean, do whatever you got to do to offer people any discounts or whatever, you know, but you got to get the reviews. It has to, for the reasons that I was explaining, you know, it's going to index keywords, it's going to give you social proof, it's going to convert, it's going to start to snowball to people see that a lot of people leave reviews, then they want to leave a review a lot easier. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Coach. Oh, to what me. Is, yeah, uh -oh. to, you, to you. What is the number Nervous. one most important strategy in order to be able to easily get reviews? The most important strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give, give your link out. Ask for it. <laughs> Here you go. Here it is. Jesus. Somebody get this guy a popsicle. Well, right? repeat it. Repeat it. Jesus said, say it again. Jesus, say it into this microphone. <laughs> said you've got to deliver kick-ass service. That's right. That's right. Because when you have quality services, it's very easy to pick up the phone and be like, what's your name? Nora. Nora. Nora, I heard the great news that you got your social media setups done and that you're super happy and I'm so happy for you. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what you do with your brand. How was the service? It was amazing. I already know that because I was told that she was blown away, right? I saw an email from her, how about how happy she was. It's a trick question. I already know she's happy. 
But I ask her, and she tells me, oh, my God, it was amazing, Manuel. Thank you for your time. And at that moment, I'm going to say, thank you, Nora. You know what? It will mean the world to me if you do me a favor. I'm sending you a link. Actually, I just sent it right now. It's on your email. Can you please do me a favor and click on it and let the world know about what we did for you? Just an actual unbiased opinion would be great, all right? It's as simple as that. Nothing will ever replace quality of services as your number one strategy. So make sure you're doing that. We do that consistently here. I'm not going to ask a review from somebody that, that doesn't, doesn't like us, right? I, I'm not going to tell you that I'm perfect. I, we, we have failed with running marketing campaigns before in the past. Anybody that tells you otherwise, they're just lying to you. Uh, if they've been in the business long enough, right? Like, there's so many different elements to, to marketing. Uh, but we make a big push uh, on writing reviews. And let me tell you something. If somebody's really upset with you, it's, I think they did a study the other day uh, about this. It is seven times, 17 times easier for somebody upset to write a review about you <laughs> than to get somebody to write a positive review. Yeah, I believe so that. So when you see somebody like us, that we have like, I don't know how many reviews. 60, 60 70, something. Something like that. 62. We have only one or two negative reviews. That says a lot about our company, right? That, because if, if you really yeah. are upset, if you walk into a gym and we take your money and we deliver a bad quality service and we keep that money and we don't give you a refund, we don't take responsibility for you, we don't make you feel that, that we agree with you, that it was a bad product, chances are that you're going to want to experience something that makes you feel better. And they call that revenge. And you sit down and you say, you know what? <laughs> this company, right? That's, that, it's natural. That's, those negative reviews that you see on Google generally are those people that we're not taking care of. When you don't see a lot of those, like in our case, you, you're going to have a tough time finding a negative review in the internet in general. It's because we do, we do good work here. Because otherwise, there's not amount of, no amount of money that I can actually pay to people to keep them away from trying to hurt us and hurt our company. And people know that, that doing a negative review will hurt us. They know that. So when you take care of people, nothing replaces that for, that for this particular strategy. Yes, there's other strategies. Offer a coupon at the end. Uh, tell them, if you write a review, I'll give you a $10 coupon for your next order, $100 free services, whatever it is, go ahead and do that. It makes it easier for them. But man, people, when you service them, they feel in debt. It doesn't matter how much they paid you. It's not about money. It really is always about services yeah. and the product and the quality of the product that they got in return. It's never about, why, why, why am I going to write a review which, when I'm give, I, I've given them so much money? Somebody like Dr. Berg, you guys have an idea how much he pays us? It's a lot of money. We, we do a lot for him, but he pays us some big, big money every single year. He still write review, writes reviews for us. He, he, I, I have a video, video that he made too. for us. I have a video <laughs> review from Dr. Berg that it almost feels like I should have paid 100 grand for it because he says, like, these guys are amazing. They're the best in the industry. I wasted so much money with all these guys. An amazing video testimonial by a content legend, one of the best ones on the planet. Why? Because of the quality of the service. I didn't have to pay a penny. Doc, would you mind making me a video? Absolutely, I'll make it for you. He's made a few of them along the way. And he's also my biggest source of referrals. He talks to others about us consistently. He feels like he wants to give back for what we've done over the last five years by now. Right? So nothing replaces that ever. So when you have a client that comes into your world, do everything you can to make them feel like they're the kings of the world and give them a high quality service because that's never going to replace with any ninja tricks. Any ninja strategies, you will never replace Agreed. what you Agreed. can create with a happy customer then being able to do this consistently for your brand. That's special. Everybody that has a review in there about us, you guys can go and check them out for yourselves. They have been somehow blown away with the experience of working with AGM. And it has been very easy to get them to write a review. We, I don't think we've even, even given them any money. We haven't given them any, no. any credits, any, no, any, no. any free services, nothing. We have done this built organically with high quality services over the years. So that is your number one strategy. You can do a whole lot of That was an unfair quiz. It was an unfair quiz? Yeah, I'm, no. not, I'm not good at pop quiz. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You have a question? No, I was going to say that um, I, think, I think it's um, industry related because if I fly with an, uh, an airline company, I don't like to 
service. I can write all the battery hits I want. It's still going to take that air life with you because it may take me away and it's a great film, but in the book. Oh, you, you'll be surprised. Like, for example, yeah. Spirit, he's talking about airlines, right? Right. Nobody's going to get me on a, on a Spirit flight. Nobody. That's true. You, you, can, you can actually <clears throat> have me fly in the cockpit or you can, <laughs> you can uh, literally pay me to get on it. I'm not getting on a Spirit flight, right? So, no. and, and there's people that have voiced that over the years. So it, it really does depend because the, the reputation eventually will affect that company. It will. It, it, that's unstoppable. So there's different scales of the problem, but the problem is real and it happens across the board, right? And usually you wouldn't go to Google to leave that review, but I like, I like your, uh, your example. <laughs> it, it is industry specific for sure. And, and like, like the uh, the very local you know type of services uh, matters way more. Right? Yeah, a question. Yeah, I have a hard time with getting reviews from people. It's like, uh, yeah, I'll give you <clears> discounts. <throat> yeah, I'll give you fifty dollar discount if you give me a nice review. If you like, you know, and they don't do it, and I don't like calling up people. Hey, man, did you do that review? I don't like bothering people, and uh, so I, I, it's just like people have a hard time just giving reviews. They just want to. I got the script done, okay, they like it, um, but they just don't want to be bothered. I'm just trying to find different ways, I'm trying to get it to get out. So, so here's what I'll do, if you. So his, his, uh, his uh, comment is he has a hard time getting people to write reviews. I'm sure you do a good service, you deliver the value of what you're supposed to deliver, and you finish the product, but you're not getting those people interested to give back to you enough. I would introduce you, what I would do is from the start of the conversation with that person, I would say, I'm gonna do this for you. Now, if I blow you away, I'm gonna ask you to do something for me. And I wanna make sure that you're okay with that. I am interested in helping other people get the, the value of my services. So because of that, would you be okay? Get the agreement beforehand. Would you be okay to write a review for me? And talk about your experience, whether good or bad, at the end of our services. If you do that from the top and you set that agreement by the end of the service, first of all, it's gonna motivate you to do a better quality product. So that's gonna help you because now you know that this person is committed to writing a review about you and your business and your service. So if you do a bad quality product, you're gonna hear the rap, right? If you do a good one, at the end of it you say, all right, well your product has been completed, the services are done, I'm gonna ask you now for the favor that I asked you in our initial conversation before you signed up for the service. I send you a link right now. I want you to click on it. Can you please go through that process right now and write a review? I'll wait on the line here with you while you do it. You have to control that conversation. Yeah. You control it. You don't leave it on their hands. If you delivered a good quality product, these people will give you the time. Listen, your work is done. Can you give me five minutes of your time? We need to do the off-boarding now and I got a couple of things to go over with you very quickly. Can you give me some time? You get that person on the phone, you send the link and you say, remember what I told you at the beginning of our relationship? Now's the time to get it done. I want you to help me spread the word so I can reach more people and service them with my ability. You ready for this? Oh, I don't got time right now. Listen, tell me what time you're ready and I'll call you back. It's like its own separate si you sales cycle, no? It. You have to control that conversation from top to bottom, yeah. all right? I got a great review from a guy I never did work with. He called me from Arizona and wanted to know about the oil removal business. We st I talked to him for about half hour on the phone, and he wrote me a review I didn't even ask for it. I'll take it. <laughs> so he said he, he got a great review from somebody that, that he, he never, never worked did. with. <laughs> you talked with the guy for half an hour, and he wrote a review about you. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. You celebrate that. You obviously created a great impact. You somehow... Gave him, gave him the value that he was looking for in that simple call, and he felt indebted to you. So people sometimes write reviews because they feel like they wanna give back. And you wanna create that. Service is senior to everything else. High quality products will trump any other strategy in the world out yeah. there, especially when you have already clients being serviced. One more question, then we'll go to the next one. Um, we ask everybody before they leave one of our sessions for a video review. Mm -hmm. I will repeat the question for you guys on the stream after she's done. And then when I send them a link to do the review, crickets. 
Yeah. And um, so I have a hard time. When I'm right there, they give me stellar reviews. I have a hard time getting them to write one out. Okay, but it's well. It's more important for me to. You get the video review. On the video reviews or just. So you're saying. Okay. For the video reviews and just keep pushing the Google. And okay, so let me repeat the question. She's saying that she's hard at. The people are blown away with the service. They're like, oh my God, this is amazing at the end of it. Are they saying this in person? Yes. Or and they're person? giving you the video review okay. then. Yeah. All right. So they're giving you a video yeah. already. Yeah. So, oh, but then you're asking for the written one. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then it's not. So you got video one. Translating to the but written. But you're not able to get them to do a written one. That's the issue right now. Okay. So why don't you address this by having a computer and asking them, thank you for your video. I just clicked on a link right now. Would you mind doing a review for us right now right here? And just leaving them set up for there at that point. And just don't miss out on that opportunity where you have them right then and there because people do get busy. If that is not practical, because ideally you want people to sign in with their Gmail account. Because when they sign in, right. so if you, want, if you can have a process in place in which they go to gmail.com, sign in, and then sign out, you know, sign in, click on the link, write the review, and then sign out, then that's the best, best way to go about it. If that is too complicated, then the follow-up process has to be in place. You can tell them right then and there, listen, this review was amazing. Can you please do me a favor and now do a written one? Get the agreement right then and there. And if they say, absolutely, I would love to do that for you, great, I send you the link right now. You can do it on your phone directly. You ready to do it? Okay, good. I'm going to follow, just so you know, I'm going to be bothering you a little bit because it's really important. And you let them know, I'm going to be bothering you a little bit. I'm going to let you know once a day because I know you get busy until you actually do the review. All right? You guys remember my policy? I talked about either block or, or buy. Is it a block <laughs> or buy from you? When you want yeah. to get something yeah, follow done, up. here's the thing, guys. It's called responsibility. You want to push until you get what you need from that person, especially when you deliver the value to that person, you feel that you're entitled to get something back also. They're helping you reach more people. So you basically follow up until they tell you, look, don't bother me anymore. If they tell you that, I would question whether you did an amazing service or not. If you message them four days in a row and they say, listen, I need you to stop messaging me already, I will look into your customer service and find out what's broken. Because if you're just trying to get in front of more people and help more people because you're passionate about what you do, there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, just a little nudge. Just have your little spreadsheet. Uh, here's nudge number two. Here's the link. Can you please do me a favor? By the way, I'm going to help you out a little bit. I transcribed what you said on the video. Here you go. You can just go ahead and paste this if you want. I want to make it very easy make for you. Make it easy. Right? And you can use a tool like, um, what's the name of the tool that we use over Descript? here? Descript. Descript.com. Mm -hmm. D-E-Script.com. Mm -hmm. And you can just plug the video in there, remove the, the, the entire text, and be like, if you want to make it even pretty for them with the grammar, Go ahead and make it pretty for them and be like, here's what you said in the video. Would you mind clicking on the link? If they don't respond to you, the next day, I'm so sorry to bother you again. I really, really want you. Your review was so amazing that I want to spread the word. I really want other people to know what your experience was. Okay. And you do this every day until you get people to write the review for you. And you have a And fill it with system. a bunch of keywords. So a no. spreadsheet. <laughs> hey, spreadsheets are magical, right? <laughs> yeah. The spreadsheets are magical, right? So you have, I, I mean, I actually need to do a better, better thing of this. I'm hoping that my guys are <laughs> taking notes of this, right? Uh, we do actually have 800 video testimonials, and we only have 60-something, right, on, on Google. But it's because we did a video testimonial campaign. Uh, back in the day when we, we launched a massive campaign in the middle of COVID, part of the exchange was, look, I'm going to give you access. You guys, if you're happy with the product that you got, I want you to give me a review. So we got 800 video testimonials. A great project would be to grab all those videos and one by one try to get people to actually write the written reviews. I have about 100. You have 100. about 100. So yeah, take those 100, phone, 100 names, put the phone number and email next to each one, Google, uh, Google Sheet. And work it like a sales, and then like, a, say, like a lead sheet. You create two columns, video, written. And then you say, if you want to go next level, you can do even a Facebook review. Facebook reviews, right? So video and written, and then you check it off as they, as they do them for you, and then you have a system of, guys, here's the thing. You look at a company like Amazon, a trillion-dollar company. 
50% of all e-commerce on the country, a massive organization. It's built on other people's opinions. That's what it's built on. You do not buy a product without reviews. You don't. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Until you don't get reviews, you're not taking off on Amazon, period. That tells you the power of other people's opinions. So you gotta do whatever you need to do to get people to write opinions about your brand, your service, your business, whatever that may be. Final tip that I'll give you in the subject of reviews, if you guys wanna get video testimonials, I've talked about this in the past, there's a website that I've used, the one that I used to get 800 reviews, it's called getbravo.com. 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 I am not affiliated with them. Your mic's off. The mic is off? Well, it's a little bit far. Okay, yeah. I see. So they can hear me? Yeah, All right. we're good now. Um, I am not affiliated with them, uh, but they have a great system for you to be able to create a, an account. You pay them, I think the basic package is like $29 a month. You check it out. I had one that was like 300 because I was able to get a lot of reviews. I did this for my father. We got 1,500 reviews. I did it for us, 600 something or almost 800 reviews, like video reviews, a lot. You go in there, 29 bucks a month, I think it is. I don't know if it's changed. I haven't checked it in a while. You set up a little landing page and you can give the link to people and be like, hey, would you mind doing me a video review? For those of you guys that cannot do it in person, that's the best way to do it, right? Because you have it right then and there. Pull out the camera and record it. For those of you guys that have a remote more serv service that is more remote, you can, especially when you know they're happy, you can create a link. And uh, in our case, I think it's, we have manorsuarez.com forward slash testimonials or something like that. They will land on this landing page and then they will click on a button and it will open up the camera on their phone and they, they would even have instructions about the, the length, bullet points that they, we want them to mention about their experience and that's it. And they submit and it sends the video testimonial back to you. So it uploads right then and there in the website. They don't have to download and upload and email and all that. Just like you That's said, right. just they click a button on the website and then boom, click a button and they're done. And now you have a media library of testimonials that you can keep on using. Here's the thing about video testimonials or written testimonials. They are evergreen, which means that they don't really expire. You can keep on using them over and over and over again. Still today, we use video testimonials that we received years ago with some of our clients right now because we are who we are. We are the same people marketing for companies and businesses. So you can keep on using these things forever. The more you accumulate, the more arsenal you're going to have to be able to get people to fall in love with you. All right, Coach? All right, next on the list is an another huge search engine, uh, Google's number one. YouTube is number two. Correct. So YouTube um, could be another huge source of leads for you guys. So one thing that we did on uh, Manuel's dad's uh, huge channel, um, Metabolismo TV, is that we started adding this towards the end of the video. So they call, we call it end screen, right? Is that what it's called? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so we, you know, we have locations all over the world. That's why we have several phone numbers here. But you, if you only have one or two or whatever, that's where you would be, you know, calling out and, and putting your phone numbers so that people can call you. That's what it will look like on a desktop. On a mobile, it's pretty cool. You can you can have links back to your website as as well as your phone number to generate leads. So you can see this video right here has 6.6 .6 million views for the lifetime of the video here. It generates a ton of phone calls for us. As well as the links, it goes back to a website where we offer a free uh, metabolism you know, quiz and to, to kind of test how, how fast your metabolism and stuff like that is. And we, and we capture name, email, phone number. They make a, um, an appointment with a calendar so they can talk to one of our consultants, et cetera. So we grab a lot more information. But if they want, they can just pick up the phone and call right then and there too. So generates a ton, a ton of uh, leads. So don't, you know, skip over YouTube for sure. Anything that you're putting on your website, you can make a simple video for it too. And now you have two different places that you could potentially rank, where that customers can potentially find you. Even if it's just a simple slideshow, it doesn't have to be like you talking to the camera, but like a, a slideshow, just make a video and get it up there. 
All right, so that was, that's it for the Google organic side of things. And now we move on to um, the paid side of things. So Google Ads, like Manuel was saying, is the senior now uh, over all the other social media platforms, over all the other ways that you could be advertising. You want to be paying it most, most attention to Google paid ads. So it's like, you know, if you want to... Uh, accelerate your process or accelerate you know the the to you getting these leads and getting to your goals faster you got to head over to the Google paid ads so I want to talk about the three different um, sections which is search local service ads a lot of people don't know about this one it's different than just the lo you know local search ads uh, and then there's YouTube ads okay so the first one is Google paid search what this means is that when somebody types in a keyword, such as uh, natural slim, like in this case, right? Um, or if they type in best dentist near me or something like that, you're gonna be showing up. This is a, a mobile view of it. And so we show up number one right here. What's, and this all depends on like how much you're willing to spend. It, it depends if you're gonna show up number one or not. It's a bidding system. That's the way that the Google ads work, right? So the keyword is worth a certain amount let's just say $5 a click or something, right? Depending on how competitive it is, how many people are searching for it and how many advertisers wanna go after it. And every click costs, let's say $5 or whatever, right? But what also matters a lot is your, what they call quality score. So you wanna make sure that your ad is answering uh, what the customer is looking for. So like in this case, Natural Slim, they're gonna give our website preference over all the other competitors because our website is Natural Slim and so obviously, whenever people land on it, they stay there and they interact and stuff like that, right? So same thing with you guys. If you're bidding on, let's say something like this is a, um, uh, an ad for one of our uh, dental office you know, clients. So if they type in best dentist in Clearwater or whatever, we got to make sure that people actually convert into leads and are converting into actions once they land on our website. So Google gives us preference on our ads and we show up towards the top. Another thing that's actually really cool is you can add these things down here, which they call these um, extensions or callouts. I think they call them both things. I don't know. They change their wording all the time. But um, so you can put your phone number right here. And on a mobile, obviously, people can just click. They start calling right away. They don't have to go to your website and fill out a form and all that. But you can also um, link out to different pages that people that are going to answer and help you convert. So for example, here we're linking out to our testimonials or our reviews. You can link out to your FAQ section. You can link out to maybe free resources section. Anything that's going to get you that click to get people onto your website, right? Or of course, like I said, you can put your phone number. And what's cool is they, you can also do a, uh, a promo um, call out. So if you have, let's say, 25% off this week only or because of Christmas or whatever it is, right? You can put that in here. It's pretty cool. Question. Is, is it paid ads? Is it time sensitive? Uh, question is, is it time sensitive? No, I mean, you, you have your campaign going whenever you want, so. Well, no, someone, someone is actually on your page. Uh huh. Do they oh, like, if, if, does it matter if they're on your page longer yeah, yeah. It, it, as far as your quality score and stuff like that? Yes, I mean, one of the things that they look, they look for is what's called bounce rates. So if people just click, and you know how sometimes your website takes a little bit to load or whatever? As soon as it loads, ah, forget it, I'm out of here, right? <laughs> That's a very high bounce rate. If somebody clicks on your ad and then they're kind of like, all right, well, they're reading through your blog and maybe they click around and they want to see your About Us page or your products page or whatever, that's a very low bounce rate. And so, yes, you know, that's a signal back to Google that your website is better than your competitors. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've noticed we have a high bounce rate because people are just going there to buy the tickets and then, you know, they're not going to the About Us or the other services that we offer. Mm -hmm. Should I not be sending them directly to the ticket page? Should I be sending them maybe to the home page and have them search for the ticket page? No. But I don't want to make it No, bounce, uh, the bounce rate is not going to be one of the very top priority things towards like you know if you should turn on your ads on and off the very first thing you're looking at is if it's getting clicks or not is that keyword getting you clicks and then if the answer is yes then it's like okay are they converting 
If the answer is no, then maybe they're not finding what they're looking for on your website. Or if it's something like you said, they're shopping for tickets, I mean, that could be a time sensitive thing, that could be a price sensitive thing. So, you know, it just kind of depends. But, but the bounce rate would not be one of those things that you're looking for. So yeah. I can still just send them directly there without Oh, yeah, you send them directly there because that's going to be the page that answers mostly the question that they're looking on, on Google for, right? They're looking for those tickets. All right, the next thing is the um, Google local services. This is a special kind of, uh, or a different kind of um, category of ads. It's not just ads for a local company, right? It's actually uh, something really cool. You can sign up as a service provider with Google. So this mostly applies to um, companies that have like a local type of service, like a realtor, a plumber, uh, a moving company, um, Electrician, I think they're in there. Lawyers, it's not everybody. Like, for example, dentists are not in there, even though that is more of a local, very local type of business. But anyways, so not everybody's in there, but there is a lot of local type businesses in there. So you, re you sign up and you register, and what's cool is you get verified by um, submitting your insurance and your license. So like, let's say you're an electrician. It's like, okay, here's my license to be an electrician. You know, you can vet me. And here's my insurance, so I'm, you know, I'm legit, right? And once that happens, you can get this Google screened um, label, which helps with click-through rates, like we were just talking about. People are going to want to click on something like this a lot more versus one that doesn't have that Google screen, right? Because obviously, you have that, that, um, that trust that Google screened you, and, and um, you, know, you, you have that social proof. And then what's cool is you can also just set a budget. You can say, oh, I want about 100 leads a month or something like that, and we can work out like how, many, how, how much would that cost depending on the keywords that we're going after and stuff. So you don't, you don't go over budget. It's pretty cool. All right. And, and Question. All of, all of that is set up where? Where do you set that up? That is set up on the Google local uh, ads um, uh, dashboard. So you Google Google or local ads, with us. <laughs> right? But if somebody wants to set it up themselves, they, they Google Google local ads or what? Yeah, you just go you search for Google local services, not local ads. Sorry, you create Lo an account local services, and then you can set that up. If you have a Google Ads account, you, you can have access to this as long as you go through the verification process. So that's the next step. Good. Yeah. And question. Uh, is it more advantageous to go through this or Google Ads? I mean, this is technically Google Ads. It's just that it's a different uh, section of it where you're going to get verified. So this usually performs better because of that. Like, you know, customers are seeing that, and you're, you've been vetted, so you usually can convert the leads a lot easier. And it's also... That's what they call the, the low-hanging fruit, Yeah. Right? People are directly they're, they're searching looking for, for real estate agents, yes, and not everybody plumber, goes through that right? process, right? Not everybody sets that up, so you know you, yeah, for you sure. have less competition. The, the less lazier you ha you are in this area, the more opportunities are going to be presented to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, the next paid section that I want to talk about is YouTube. So you can run all the ads on Google Search, and what's cool about YouTube ads is two things. If people are searching on Google Ads, you can set it up that your ads also show up on YouTube for the people that are searching over there. So eventually, they're going to come to YouTube at some point, right? So they're not, they're not searching for you on YouTube, but you can still follow them there if you set it up correctly. Or you could just choose that you want to you know, show it to everybody in, in, in YouTube, and you can select a, an area that you want your ads to show up in, like usually your city, of course. And this is how it shows up. So this is called an in-stream ad or clickable ads, skippable ads. There's kind of like a bunch of different names. Again, Google likes to change up the naming conventions all the time, right? So, um, you know, people can skip the ad. You, you've seen this, right? Like you, you can skip the ad before or after five seconds. <laughs> or you can click right here and head on over to the website. So you got to do a really good job of in the first five to ten seconds, like really hook them in. And, uh, and that's what you should test over anything is those five seconds hooking them in. This is called, this is called intense, intent based marketing. Yes. Intent based. Because when you do this right, this is not a new thing that I have, talk, I have talked about this for a long time. The Google ads generate leads 
which are higher quality, much higher quality, mm -hmm. than Facebook leads. The reason for that is because the Facebook leads are not looking to solve their problems right then and there. They're browsing through their feed. The Google people are searching for problems that they have right now. The most common example will be a plumber. The toilet is clogged. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be looking for a plumber on Facebook. I, ha I have a toilet that's clogged. I'm looking for it on Google. So the way that this work is, is on, on Google is a lot more powerful because the two biggest search engines are owned by the same company called Google. So Google.com, YouTube. So if somebody goes and they search for uh, roofing repair on Google, and they have all these companies show up nearby, but they don't really follow through on, on that particular process because maybe they're not ready right then and there, but they already have an awareness of their roof being in trouble. So they're aware already. This is not a Facebook audience, right? This is not somebody that's like, oh, wow, it might be interesting to look into our roof, huh? Hmm. Uh, honey, how old is our roof, right? Like you start asking questions, right? That's the Facebook audience or Instagram audience. It's very different. The Google one is like, oh my God, I got, this stuff is about to fall apart. Like I, I have a leak or I have like emergency the, the roof repair. The shingles <laughs> look like they, they're completely discolored. The problem is already there. So they go to Google and they search for the problem. They don't find somebody right then and there, but now they start watching videos on YouTube. It doesn't matter what videos they watch. They could watch like Coco Melon because that's what their kids like to watch. I don't know, right? Uh, they could be watching like, um, I don't know, trailers to movies. It doesn't really matter. Google knows that a few minutes ago mm -hmm. or the day before, you were searching for a plumber or a roofer or something like that. So what they do is that they do intent-based marketing. They're going to put your intent-based video ad saying like, hey, you know, I know you might be, in the, you might be looking, looking for a plumber or you might be looking for uh, a roofing company. Well, we got 27 years in business and ta -ka -ta -ka -ta -ka -ta, whatever it is. And now you're talking to people that are qualified. So these two platforms, they help each other out a lot. Facebook and, I'm sorry, YouTube and Google communicate. So when you do it correctly, you're putting ads in front of people that are searching for solutions to their problems already on Google.com. Yeah, because they know everything that you have in your Gmail. They obviously know what you're searching on Google and searching on YouTube and what websites you've been to. It's like uh, they, I did a training with one of our friends, Brett, and uh, he was saying like they know that you're pregnant before you're pregnant. And, it's <laughs> and, it's, and it turned out to be true. Like the, the, the girl he was talking about, she was giving the example. She started looking a few, a few days or weeks later, I forget, and she was getting ads before that. So it's like, anyways, they know everything. Um, so yeah, so, uh, so that was that I was going to say. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say on, on YouTube ads is that you can select a radius, like a city or several cities that you want to show your ads. And like Manuel was saying, like if they... They'll do the filtering for you to know, you know who to show it to first. But you can also choose keywords on there. So you could say people that are searching for best dentist in Atlanta or whatever um, on Google or type it in dentist in Atlanta or whatever on YouTube and you can come up in front of them uh, when they're watching a video. Which, oh, which, which is a different strategy, by the way. Because yeah, now people are on YouTube looking for a best dentist. Yeah. This, like, at an intent-based ad, again, like I said, it doesn't matter what they're watching on YouTube. We're going to put ads in front of them, whether they're watching Coco Melon or Soap Opera or whatever. We're going to say, hey, you're looking for a roofer? We can help you, right? So it's different strategy, but they're all like very, very powerful and very important. So I know we got more to cover. We should leave the questions for the end. Can you hold on to your question? Okay. Yep. And uh, uh, so I was going to add to that is that you can choose your keywords or you can also even choose your um, videos and your channels that you want to show up in front of. So you know who your competitors are? Put your, put your videos in front of them. It's actually really, really cool, really powerful. So, so he's asking, how do you do that? Well, on, on, on the Google uh, advertising platform, um, you can actually select which channels you want to target. Mm -hmm. When, you, uh, and when unless, you're building out the ad. Unless you are, for example, uh, in Natural Slim, we have had a routine over the years of eliminating advertisers from our channel. So even though we allow advertising, I can say I don't want anybody that sells supplements or anybody that sells supplements. 
or anybody that sells weight loss or none of that, right? We, we want to make sure that we allow other advertisers that are not direct competitors of mine. Otherwise, I'm just stupid, right? Like, so as a, as a brand, I can select that. And for example, Dr. Berg also, over the years, when we find an advertiser that's advertising on our YouTube channel, we exclude it and we say, this advertiser, this brand is not allowed to advertise on our uh, channel. But most, most, most brands don't do that. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's because they have us. Like most brands don't even know you can exclude all those people, but we figured out how to do that, so. Correct, so because most people don't know how to do that, you can go to YouTube and you can create an ad campaign uh, to the Google, uh, Google ads. Whatever channel you want. And you can, so you can target channels. Like let's say that you're selling toys, right? Children's toys. Well, you go to uh, um, Coco Melon, <laughs> right? And you put ads there um, to promote your toys. Or there's, uh, there's so many YouTubers that all they do is that they unboxing of toys. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Ryan's, there's, there's, Ryan's there's, toy review there's or one that, uh, There's one that I was since my kids were very little. E even, e e even tube or something. Oh, I don't know that one. He's already big already, but a gazillion subscribers, all right? Gazillion. And, you know, if, you, if you're smart, you can make an enormous list of all those YouTube channels and just target them because yeah. I guarantee you most of them do not even know how to exclude advertisers that are direct competitors to their stuff. So that's part of the YouTube slash Google opportunities. Yeah, and we'll follow up on that and we're gonna try to do a, a YouTube ads workshop soon. So the last thing I wanna talk about is you can generate all these leads, right? But the follow-up is where the gold is. 72% of sales close, not after, you know, the first call close, right? It's after 12 follow-up attempts after 12 times of trying to get in touch with them. Maybe you did get a hold of them, or maybe you didn't, but it usually was gonna take multiple times of trying to follow up with somebody, right? So be persistent and speed. So following up with, um, following up with people within 10 minutes, a lot of our customers even, we have to kind of indoctrinate them on how to work these leads that we generate, because sometimes we generate a bunch of them and they're like, eh, I'll get to them later, you know? And it's like, to them even hours later, the, the chance of closing goes down so much. I mean, think about it, like you guys probably have filled out something online, right? And, and if they take a long time before they get back to you, you're like, who is this? What, why are you calling me? Even if it was like an hour later, right? So it incre increases your chance of closing by 900 times by just following up with them in the first 10 minutes. And uh, raise your hand if you've ever filled out something online and you prefer to be contacted by text. Okay, what about if you prefer to get a phone call? You're getting blocked if you call me. <laughs> it's true. So, you know, 65% of the leads are going to prefer text, yet a lot of, even our customers, again, we have to indoctrinate them on how to follow up with all these leads. They're not calling, or they're not texting these people. You can call too, but you have to text. And like going back to your review question, I would follow up with them through text more than, you know, even trying to call them and trying to get that review them absolutely all right so that's it all right <laughs> awesome coach okay okay good so as usual we're a little bit overextended anybody wants to again on the stream thank you guys for being here got a lot of people on YouTube I appreciate you guys very much any questions that you already uh, asked on the stream we'll get to them uh, we'll get to them shortly uh, anybody that wants to talk to one of our guys to find out how we can help you, whether you want Amazon management uh, services, Mr. Rob over here, he's the boss in that area, uh, or you want to generate leads and you want to work, work with people like Mr. Dan over here, who's a, an account manager at AGM, or you want to uh, create content. I got Jimmy managing the, the, um, the stream right now in the back room over there. We have a lot of great people that we can help you. Uh, with different areas from content creation to management of social media channels to advertising on Facebook and Instagram to TikTok management, helping you get your content to go viral, whatever the case may be, whatever help you need, we're here to help you. So if you guys want to talk to one of our guys, talk to a ninja.com. You can book an appointment, talk to one of them. Who knows? Maybe I can show up too. Maybe the coach shows up and we can see how we can help you. All right. Show you how to set up some of these ads from today, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, Carly, what do we got uh, in two weeks? We're going to talk about Google. Yes. And we're going to talk about Google. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so is that going to be the YouTube workshop, Horace? Or is that the one, that, yeah, where we can talk about YouTube ads? 
We could talk about YouTube ads. Is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> the, the coach was put on the spot. So we are talking about YouTube ads in two weeks, all right? Yes. That's the idea. So I will see you guys in the next workshop. Thanks for coming again. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.